I've been on a really interesting journey these last few years because as someone who does occupy a lot of evangelical spaces and white evangelical spaces, uh, I've been a part of that world that we know famously now, 81% uh, of whom voted for President Trump. And going all the way back to early in the primaries, uh, I had, there were so many things that were troubling me. You know, not that I ever want to, uh, especially as a church leader, to align my own faith uh, too much with any one particular candidate, but I was finding just all these things around the Trump phenomenon to be uniquely disturbing in so far that I just felt like there was so much blame, there was a lot of scapegoating of anybody who's other. For example, I've heard many political conservatives make the claim to me, uh, things like, hey, I don't believe it's the government's job to care for the poor, I think it's the churches. You know, I would have some pushback on that, but I understand where, where that worldview is coming from. But then what I felt like I saw happening was there's this shift now from, you know, it's not the, the government's job, it's the churches, to these are dirty, bad people who infect us. And like that, Christians are not given permission to do that. We don't get to demonize the people that Christ is going to, Matthew 25, will judge us based on how we treat these folks, refugees, immigrants, outcasts, people on the margins, and we, the idea of like demonizing and vilifying such folks, I mean, that's, that's not okay. So that was the thing in particular about the Trump phenomenon that uniquely disturbed me. But as, you know, Trump won the primaries and then later the elections, um, I had to, you know, I had to struggle because, uh, you know, part of my calling as a follower of Jesus is I'm called to pray for those who are in authority. And, because in my case in particular, I attempt to submit my life to the discipline of the Book of Common Prayer, it's gonna lead me to pray for the president. So it's, it's been an interesting journey because I think the more I, the more I pray for him, the more I see, not only about him or about the world that we live in, but things I have to see in myself. Because to pray for a person is to humanize them. And I do think it's possible, even though this is a really difficult line to, to, to straddle, you know, in, in my view, there are things about President Trump's policies, in particular postures and ideologies, that to me represent principalities and powers that the church is called to resist. But I think it's possible to resist those principalities without demonizing that person, without hating that person. Uh, in fact, it is an absolute necessity that we love this person. It's, it's a necessity that I love Donald Trump. I just think the very moment that we allow our energy to kind of be filled with uh, hate and spite. Not there's never a time to be angry. I'm not saying that. I, I, I think, you know, rage sometimes can be a perfectly decent starting point to get involved in something constructive that matters, but it won't sustain you for long. You know, it, it, there's something about rage and anger when it's indulged in. It has a way of, of, of burning us. Uh, we, we kind of flame out. Uh, if we want to be people who see vast transformation within our society, especially like spiritual transformation, Love and the power of the Holy Spirit is the only thing that can do that, and that cannot exist with, with hate. So when I pray for President Trump, you know, I find myself praying for all kinds of things. I pray for him as a person. I pray for his marriage and for his health and well-being. I mean, I, I, I still, I absolutely, for all the disagreements, I would still pray blessings on him as a person in that way. But I also find myself praying very openly that God would change his heart and mind in a dramatic way, that God would confront him with the truth and the, you know, the truth, not just of the gospel of Jesus in an abstract way, pray some sinner's prayer. I could care less about any of that, but the truth about the kinds of people that God loves and God's uh, preferential care for the poor, these things are ground floor to what it is to be a Christian. So I hope he is confronted with those truths and I hope that he, that he changes. So it's, it's, it's a tight rope to be sure to, to, to pray for someone when you have all these other kinds of feelings, but I think it's precisely because I have a lot of other kinds of feelings that I feel like in this season right now in particular, I feel like I'm being called to, to pray for him more, which of course I don't want to do, of course there's all kind of resistance to that, but I find the more that I do that, the more I not only it humanizes him, it humanizes me, and as I learn how to, not just with him, but anybody that I pray for that I have some conflict with, as I, as I pray for God to meet them in areas where they're broken and wounded, it's also teaching me how to be more tender with my own wounds and how to, you know, how to be mended and how to be whole and healed. So, I mean, it has all kinds of implications in that way.